What's going on everybody? It's your boy Freeplay here coming at you with some more Immortals Phoenix Rising news. And today we got a lot to talk about. So first things first, a couple of weeks ago the PC requirements dropped for the game. And I gotta say they don't look too bad at all. Honestly, the majority of people should be able to play this game without any problem really. And starting at the lower end, we have 720p at 30fps running with an Intel Core i5-2400 or an AMD FX-63000, a GTX 660 or an AMD R9-280, 8GB of RAM, 2GB of VRAM, and it will only take up 28GB of storage. So very manageable specs. And on the high end with running at 4K at 30 FPS, we have an Intel Core i7-8700K and an AMD Ryzen 7 3700K, an RTX 2070 or a Vega 56 and 16 gigs of RAM. So it doesn't go above 16 gigs of RAM, eight gigs of VRAM and still the 28 gigs of hard drive space. There was also a video that dropped from the Ubisoft PC community developer that went over specifics of the PC version as opposed to the console versions. So it looks like the PC version will be getting some added attention as opposed to just being a basic port, which is always great news for us PC fans, just because there's a lot of times where the developers will just port over a simple version of the of the console experience and it's a buggy mess. It wasn't developed for the PC. It has a bunch of problems as opposed to the console counterparts. And I'm happy to see that they're taking the time out to show the PC community some love. And so some of the things that they went over this video are very technical, but basically just to break it down for you, the engine of this game is an adaptive version of the Anvil engine, which they say will allow for better scalability across all platforms and provide better optimization. And so this kind of goes in hand with the PC specs that we were looking at earlier and that they want a wide range of people to be able to play this game at the best possible settings. And in this video, they also said that this game will have uncapped frame rates on the PC. So for everybody out there that's rocking some serious hardware, you should have no problem pushing this game way past 60 FPS. It also supports multi-monitor setup all the way up to a 48 by 9 ratio. The game will also include a dedicated in-game benchmark and a real-time performance analyzer so you can monitor your hardware performance in real time. And in the video, they also mentioned mouse and keyboard customization, which is always good. But then they talked about their controller support and the use of different game pads. And they didn't mention anything about customizing controller inputs. So we'll have to wait and see if this is an option when the game drops. So all in all, the PC requirements are really manageable. And I'm happy to see that they're paying attention to a wide player base so they can get many people into the world as possible. And that just means more people are able to play this at higher settings. Next, we got a preview of some of the Nintendo Switch gameplay. And while this version of the game doesn't look as graphically impressive as like the main console versions or the PC versions, it does look like the system runs the game well enough to, you know, sacrifice that performance for convenience. And so I know that if I was getting this on the Switch, I'm getting it on PC by the way, but if I was getting it on the Switch, I would definitely be enjoying this game while I'm on the toilet. So to all my Nintendo players out there, definitely be on the lookout for this one. And going along with console news, it's also been confirmed that this game will be releasing the same day, December 3rd, for PS5 and Xbox Series X or S. So whichever model you have, you will be able to play this game as well. And they haven't given any information regarding the any updates to graphical fidelity or anything like that, but I'm sure we can expect to see better loading times and better frame rates compared to the previous generation. And next, we have a bit of strange news here. I definitely wasn't expecting this and I really don't know what to think of it. There is a crossover with Immortals Phoenix Rising and Adventure Time. Now, they just released a trailer um, a couple of days ago and in it, they don't show any gameplay or they don't hint at what the crossover is. It's just a little teaser animated like Adventure Time. And so you just see Finn and Jake walking in this new world and then they run into the main hero, Phoenix, uh, fighting Cerberus. And so I'm not sure what to really make of this. I don't know what it really means. 
Uh, they haven't really said anything beyond that. I don't know if it's DLC. I don't know if it's cost anything or if it's a free update. I don't know. I don't know. So uh, put in the comments below, what do you think this crossover means? Will we get just to play as Finn and Jake in this world? Or will they just be simple cosmetic upgrades that we could get along the adventure? So put in the comments. Uh, let's think about it. And let's just predict what this can mean. And last, but certainly not least, we finally got information on the post launch support of the game. And so there was a trailer that dropped for the three DLCs that are coming out. The first one titled A New God, the second one titled Myths of an Eastern Realm, and the third one being The Lost Gods. And in this trailer, we got a brief description of what each expansion will contain. I'm gonna save my opinions on this for another video. And while I think the DLC looks good and fun, I always have mixed feelings about developers revealing the DLC before the game even comes out. But it is good to see that the developers are supporting the game after it comes out so we have more content to dive into, especially since this is a new IP. And although we didn't get any information on the release dates of these DLCs or their prices individually, we did see something very interesting. They will be having free content added to the game regularly. So daily and weekly quests, community contests, vault challenges, and cosmetics will be free content added to the game. And you know that's a plus for me. Currently, the standard version of the game will cost $59.99 or 60 bucks. While the Gold Edition comes with the base game, the Season Pass, and some additional character and weapon packs will be $99.99 or 100 bucks. And guys, that is everything I have for the news update today. So be sure to check back for some more information. Like I said, I'll be giving my thoughts on the season pass and I'll be going over each one of the expansions in depth. But until next time, guys, stay blessed and stay free.